everyone. It's good to see you again. This is Deepak Krishna VM, ME Structural Engineering AMI, a verified educator from N Academy, welcomes you again. So in the previous lesson, we have seen some of the fine, uh, some of the natural aggregates that participate in the lightweight concrete. So if this is the continuation lesson. We see the rest of the squad from the natural aggregates. So before that, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the N Academy. Also follow us on the other platforms like official Facebook page, official app and the website. So let's begin. Hello everyone, good to see you, hope you're having a good time. So in the previous lesson we have seen some of the natural aggregates that participates in the lightweight concrete, alright. So in today's lesson, we'll have a small continuation of the previous lesson so that we can see the rest of the squad of the natural aggregate, alright. So without wasting further time, let's start today's lesson. But before that, let's have a small recap of the previous lesson, okay. So let's let's see what aggregate means in the lightweight concrete environment, all right? So first and foremost, so aggregates plays a vital role in a concrete mix, whether it is a normal mix, whether it is a special concrete, or whether it is in a lightweight concrete. Wherever they go, the aggregate has a special, uh, what can we say, role in imparting the uh, behavioral properties for the concrete. Okay, and uh, uh, so so as we all know, so so again, as I said before, aggregates plays a vital role. It, especially in the department of the strength and durability, aggregates has a, a very crucial role. Okay, so in lightweight concrete, if the aggregate, uh, aggregate has to be chosen in a very specific manner. Okay, so if the aggregate weigh less than 1000 kg per meter cube, they are considered as lightweight aggregates. Okay, so such aggregates are qualified for the lightweight concrete. It is so lightweight in nature. So basically, it's it's lightweight because of its highly porous microstructure. Okay, if you look into deep into the uh, microstructure of the lightweight concrete, we can observe that it is mostly porous in nature. All right. So it should be uh, strong enough to be considered as aggregate. All right. That's why some of the um, uh, mineral admixture, uh, mineral uh, aggregates like uh, wood chips cannot be used because. They are not durable in the alkaline environment of the cement in the concrete. All right. So generally, the aggregates can be divided into natural and artificial. So we have been uh, watching the natural environment from the previous lesson itself, natural aggregates from the previous lesson itself. So let's see some of the rest of the aggregates we couldn't cover in the previous lesson. So previously, we have seen pumic, diatomite, I mean, uh, wall, silica sand, gravel, crushed, crushed stone. Okay. That is pumic, silica sand, and gravel and crushed stone. And also, and today, let's see the rest of the team. Okay. So first and foremost, we'll start with the volcanic tuffs. All right. Some say tuff, some say tuff. Whatever it is, it's we can pronounce it as volcanic tuff for a con convenience. So these are a type of volcanic fragmented lava rocks, which means that this is a, a lava derivative. Okay. So the uh, the the word tuff or tuff. Is derived from the Italian word tufo. Okay, so this rock is made out of volcanic uh, volcanic ash, which are erupt erupted from a vent during the volcanic eruption. Okay, so following the eruptions and after the deposition, these ashes uh, consolidated and hence form in the rock form. So such is the tuff uh, deposition. Okay, so these are relatively soft rocks and these are used for the construction from the ancient times itself, especially if you look in the Roman Empire. Okay. So this can be classified either as sedimentary or metamorphic classifications. Okay, so as as we say, this is the soft rock. Okay, the the soft the softness of this rock is due to the presence of pores present inside it. So why the pores are present? So these pores are present uh, due to the presence of due to the result of gas bubbles that are generated due to rapid hardening and rapid cooling and hardening of lava. Okay, when the lava comes out, as uh, when the magma comes out, it is very hot. But when it comes to the uh, when it comes out as lava, it cools and solidifies. Okay, so this sudden cooling and hardening of the lava will result in the uh, escaping of gas bubbles, which results in the pore formation. Okay, uh, if you look at the structure or the microstructure of this volcanic tuff, it can be it can be seen as they are amorphous in nature. Okay, they can change the shape. They are vitreous in structure, which means that they are glassy and smooth. Okay, and glass-like properties, and they're chemically unbalanced. Okay, and um, the num the amount of pores. Okay, the pore properties, pore proportions vary in the volcanic tuff is from 20 to 60 percentage. Okay, 
So some of the major tuff present or major classification of tuffs are rhyolite, dacite, andesite, and trap tuffs. Okay, so that's how volcanic tuffs are all about. Now let's move on to the next one is the volcanic slag. So another so another derivative from the volcanic uh, volcanic lava itself. So hence it's another lava derivative. But uh, just like the volcanic tuffs, slag is also vitreous in nature, but they are more crystallized slag-like material. Okay. What is vitreous? They are they are glassy like glass-like property and glass-like appearance, and that means the physical properties of a glass, glass-like physical properties, and also, but they are not amorphous. They are more crystallized. Their um, structures are more defined. Okay, so they are more crystallized like slag, like material. All right. The other features of volcanic slag is that it consists of high proportions of ferrous oxide, lime, and organic oxide. Okay. But there is another catch in that it has a very low alkali content. Okay. And also the sulfur content. It also has sulfur and sulfate content in it. So the sulfur content will not exceed a 10.5 percentage and the sulfate content will not exceed 1 percentage. Alright. So that is all about the volcanic slag. But also if you look the property uh, properties of the components or the proportions of the components. We can see that the silica will be uh, 43 to 55 percentage, alumina will be 18 to 24 percentage, and ferrous oxide will be 8 to 20 percentage. I repeat once more the proportions are silica will be 43 to 55 percentage, uh, Al2O3 alumina will be 18 to 24 percentage, uh, ferrous oxide Fe2O3 will be 8 to 20 percentage, silica is SiO2. Okay, so uh, this uh, slag which will be in the powdered form. See, uh, when this volcanic slag powder comes in contact with lime, turns into a chemical binder. Okay, so this binder will provide the strength to the lightweight concrete. So this is how it is applied. Okay, this volcanic slag, when it is uh, combined with the lime, uh, lime, uh, so hen hence it will form a binder which provides the strength to the concrete structures. Okay, lightweight concrete actually. So this again was pioneered by the Romans. Okay, so as you can see the Romans are one of the pioneers of the concrete. It's very interesting to look at their history and their relationship with the concrete and cement. And now let's move on to the uh, diatomite. Okay, so diatomite. So these are uh, hydrated amorphous silica. So this is another derivative of silica. These are hydrated form which is an amorphous nature. They are from the remains of microscopic aquatic plants. Uh, which is known as diatoms, also known as case go. Okay, so these are again, this is this these are something like a, what can we say, a natural oil. And I'm not oil. Uh, it, the process of obtaining is a, something like uh, something like a, a what can we say, natural fuel. When we get a crude oil, right? How it is formed, and the plant structures are when the plants uh, fragments are deposited inside for many many of years, it get decomposed and form into crude oil. Okay, in a very simple procedure. So just like that, uh, this diatomite is also derived from the microscopic aquatic plants. Okay, so these uh, deposits of aquatic plants are formed beneath the surface, uh, very beneath the earth's surface, uh, and um, uh, in the uh, not earth's surface, especially beneath the ocean floors. Okay, so during the continent formation, these things came out. Okay, so one of the major use is that it is, these are used as the workability agent. Okay, and also this has got a very good pozzolanic material. So the, it has cementitious property and it has a workability property too, which is a very good boon for a design engineer or designer or a site engineer. So because we have enough workability and consistency, so it can impart to it and also it has a good pozzolanic material. Okay, but the only problem with diatomite is the availability of it. Okay, it's not much uh, widely available in nature. Uh, these are sintered in roller kilns to reduce the lightweight aggregates. Okay, these are sintered in the roller kilns and hence lightweight aggregates are formed and hence these are used in the lightweight concrete. Okay, now the next one is the uh, scoria. So I hope the pronunciation is right, scoria. So these are another volcanic origin, lightweight aggregate. So again, another volcanic origin here. So these are... Uh, this, in, uh, if you look at the internal structures, we can see that these are larger, irregular. This contains larger and irregular shaped cells, okay, which are unconnected with each other. Which, when we compare with the tufts, tufts are connected with each other, but whereas the uh, scoria, they are unconnected with each other, which is one of the reasons why uh, these are slightly weaker, weaker than the pumic. Okay, in the tufts and the pumic, the cells or the internal struct, internal bonds are really connected with each other. Here it's not much connected and hence 
uh, it's not as strong as pumic okay now the let's move on to the sawdust okay so sawdust is something that we all know what it is from the sawmills we get it as a waste material so these are used in lightweight used as lightweight aggregates in floors and in precast products in joinless floors and roof tilings so these are used in the places where you doesn't need much structural efficiency and especially some art uh, what can we say architectural appearances and also when there is a huge need of there's a huge demand or there's a very good necessity for cost cutting in some places like floors and joinless flooring and roof tiles uh, sawdust can be used and also a very good method for uh, what can we say waste management all right so one of the, but the this still the saw this is saw, saw dust not the other any porcelanic cementitious material some of the adverse effects are it affects the setting and hardening hardening time of cement okay why because of the presence of tannins and soluble hydro uh, carbohydrates to pardon me ha carbohydrates okay so this affects the setting and hardening hardening time so uh, the, uh, the it fluctuates actually not it uh, we can say that it brings down or br goes up it fluctuates the values for setting and hardening time which makes us a bit confusing when while we use the sawdust okay so as a remedial measure for this calcium chloride okay maximum of 5 percentage by weight of cement is used which is found successful by the researchers so another big problem was the shrinkage and moisture moment which also found very high in this um, particular natural aggregate so that's why it cannot be used for uh, other very high structural usages or which demands a very structural efficiency okay but in places like architectural pro, uh, pro architectural needs uh, some places like floors and some places like jointless flooring and some precast products like for the architectural precast products these can be used okay and also a very good cost cutting cutting method also so i hope you understand today's lesson thank you for being a good listener that's all for today please comment your suggestions please rate my presentation recommend i share the slides this is my profile to the profile link to the an academy platform follow me through there you can see the works and courses i've put over there based on the uh, concrete technology and all the tests for the concrete and cement is of concrete cement and the ingredients is also over there so thank you once again i wish you a great day until next time ciao